it's friday september 14th the bombay high court has turned down an 18 year old rape survivor's plea to terminate her 27 week pregnancy after a medical board constituted by the court held that there is a threat to her life if allowed to abort the medical termination of pregnancy act currently does not allow termination beyond the gestational period of 20 weeks the rape survivor from satara had pleaded that the delay in moving the court for permission was because of her family's ignorance of the legal provisions of the medical termination of pregnancy act this case once again puts the spotlight on the need as reproductive rights activists have been saying to amend the law the campaign to review the existing law began in right earnest exactly 10 years ago in 2008 a couple niketa and harish mehta along with their dr nikhil datar moved the bombay high court seeking permission to terminate her pregnancy after tests showed severe abnormalities in the fetus's heart the plea made by the couple was that they did not want the child to suffer for life the court rejected the plea and that ignited a debate on the need to amend the legislation medical professionals argue that when the medical termination of pregnancy act was enacted in 1971 the technology may have allowed for safe abortions only up to the 20 week period but advancement in medicine and technology they argue allow for aborting the fetus even beyond the 20 weeks period with no additional risks dr datar writes under normal circumstances pregnancy causes a lot of stress for a woman when she gets a prognosis that the pregnancy is bad and further that she will have to continue the pregnancy to term it is absurd unfair and unjust and against human rights and health rights The argument that abortion beyond 20 weeks is risky to the woman is not true. The United Kingdom allows abortions till 24 weeks, and if there is a risk to the life of the woman and a substantial risk to the baby being born handicapped, the pregnancy can be terminated any time even after 24 weeks. China allows for abortions till 28 weeks. Dismissing another argument that allowing abortion beyond the 20 week time frame will lead to an increase in sex selective abortions. Dr Datar says In my 25 years as a gynecologist I have seen that those who want to undergo sex selective abortions do not wait till they cross the 20 week period on the pretext of controlling sex selective abortions we cannot let other women suffer because the government is not able to control sex determination Since the turning down of Nikita Mehta's plea by the Bombay High Court many cases seeking judicial sanction have come up In 2016 the Supreme Court allowed a rape survivor to abort a 24 week fetus. In 2017 the Apex Court gave the go ahead for termination of a 24 week pregnancy after the fetus was found to have anencephaly, a life threatening condition in which the baby does not have parts of the brain and skull. But the same year the Supreme Court refused permission to terminate the pregnancy of a 10 year old rape survivor. It has also been noted that pregnant women have to face substantial mental and financial hardship by moving court to seek permission to terminate pregnancy when abnormalities are detected beyond the 20 week period. In 2014, the government drafted a bill to amend the act, allowing for termination up to 24 weeks, but the bill is yet to be passed. The sample registration system data shows unsafe abortions contribute to 8% of total maternal deaths. which makes a strong case to amend the act to increase the availability of safe and legal abortions in India. With 1318 confirmed cases and 53 confirmed deaths due to leptospirosis up to September 11th, is Kerala facing a leptospirosis epidemic, a bacterial disease that is transmitted from animals in Kerala's case from rats to humans? Leptospirosis also called elipani or rat fever in Malayalam is carried through collected water that is contaminated by the urine of bacteria host mammals like rodents cats or dogs humans in prolonged contact with the contaminated water particularly people with cuts or gashes on their hands and feet are susceptible with symptoms including high fever headaches chills abdominal pain and rashes leptospirosis is easy to detect and curable when recognized in early stages 
The Kerala state health machinery said they were well equipped to deal with any outbreak of leptospirosis and had sent out a detailed plan for prevention as flood waters receded. So, what led to so many cases in Kerala? Writing for Scroll, Mala Ramanathan and Ravi Prasad Varma of the Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute of Medical Sciences and Technology Trivandrum analyzed Kerala sounded an alert for leptospirosis on August 28th, naming Trishur, Palakkad, Korikod, Malapuram, and Kannur as districts facing high risk of infection. However, while Trishur and Palakkad did not report deaths in the first week of September, three deaths were reported in new districts. Though the Directorate of Health Services provided prophylactic drugs in flood affected areas, the Directorate's follow up reports indicate many of those who died had not taken the prophylactic doses for various reasons due to inaccurate public perception of the disease and its risks. Though the Army and the Navy distributed doxycycline, a prophylactic medicine used to prevent the incidence and spread of leptospirosis, reports showed the clear instructions on when to consume the drug and in what doses were not issued. Fake WhatsApp messages about the effectiveness of various preventive measures were also in circulation, adding to the confusion. I had started my journey expecting to find a graveyard of languages because I'd heard that languages are disappearing all over the world. What I found was a very rich, very appealing and very enticing forest of languages. I still have to make a full sense of that forest, but I am quite assured today that it exists in the country. The 1961 census had 1,652 mother tongues listed. The data of 1971 showed only 108 mother tongues. This meant that nearly over 1,500 mother tongues, 1,550 mother tongues, had been concealed in the data disclosed by the census authorities uh, in the 1971 census. I kept feeling very, uh, very curious as to where have all these mother tongues gone. One day, I sat down and decided to draw a map of mother tongues which had been concealed. And I noticed that the uh, density of the concealed languages was in the middle of the map of India. We have the Indo-Aryan languages sp spoken in the north, Dravidic languages spoken in the south. But the, the zone in between uh, seemed slightly problematic. I started asking myself why the two groups have not merged despite having lived together nearly for 3000 years. And then it occurred to me that the zone in between had kept them separate. And this zone is populated by tribal communities. This is the zone roughly running from Surat to Haura, if you were to do a straight line, Surat on the map of India. And so I decided that I would quit my university job, move to tribal area, uh, take up a notebook or a tape recorder in hand, go from village to village and document the languages. From the very best linguist to a, a college boy, housewife to a postman, a car driver, anybody I spoke to and who was interested in language, I tried to uh, seek something from that person with his or her help reach a higher level of understanding. Uh, I think because of this kind of collective contribution, the project became successful. Of course. I did not accept everything that came my way because a lot of filters, scrutiny, verification, logical consistency, the, the linguistic frameworks, transcription, transliteration, uh, all that had to be done. But the beginning was 
with people safers because please let us not forget that wherever the colonial power was spread the local languages were destroyed completely in australia in the united states in canada in this country so many languages remained alive despite a long spell of colonial rule so the people of this country deserve the credit for all this work in a way this spirit is reflected in the constitution of india with at present 22 languages in the eighth schedule no other country in the world has so many official officially recognized languages great histories these languages have uh, say the, uh, the uh, in himachal pradesh bhuti language now bhuti has come from bhutan that language has uh, semantic links right up to the heart a very heart of china and those links in turn get relinked i mean they go up to armenian turkey now this is one route turkey to china to tibet bhutan to india the other route is armenian came through iran to india and became sanskrit the language of zendavesta became the subsequently after many many centuries after nearly a, a, a gap of 800 to 1200 years became the early version of sanskrit of the vedas so languages are linked globally marathi of the 16th century went right up to tamil nadu tanjore and the people in tanjore speak marathi the way marathi speakers used to speak it in the 17th century so uh, for instance if we imagine how shivaji maharaj converse with his colleagues uh, we can go to tanjore and listen to that marathi and imagine how it how he must have converse what were the what was the conceptual framework Uh, what were the terms of reference for uh, describing this world the kind of india that i could observe and see and learn about was you know material for 8 or 10 novels really i i had not imagined india to be like this invariably when languages grow enormously they start diminishing or dying uh, there is a principle uh, which uh, which needs to be stated more systematically within the realm of linguistics and that is a language has its carrying capacity and when a language starts carrying l- semantic load beyond its carrying capacity it starts cracking up this happened to the latin language in europe all the vernaculars started growing and latin started going down from the 7th century onward there is no latin left except in the church che la violenza il rancore la vendetta this happens to every large language the chinese and the english and the spanish will crack up and develop into different languages primarily because language is a means of communication and it communicates so long as humans in those groups have a sense of community nations don't make us human languages make us human but languages make us behave like civilized beings thank you